You ever get these kinds of sounds with the bow? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and getting a good tone with the bow can be a mysterious process. Bad sound will hold you back and make it almost impossible to get better. It's really discouraging. So in this video, we're going to go through a checklist of common causes of bad sounds and their solutions, plus the golden rule of sound that will make everything work better on the bass. Let's dive in and you can download the checklist of all these problems and their diagnoses in the description below. Number one is not getting the fundamental. That's this kind of airy, whooshy sound that's so easy to get on bass. Part of the challenge is that these strings are just so thick, they take a lot to get going, they take a lot of rosin, they take the right kind of arm weight. So one of the biggest reasons for getting this sound is just not having enough rosin or not having fresh rosin. So make sure that you've got good rosin, fresh rosin. You should be able to put the bow on the string and move the string back and forth before letting it go. And if you can do that, almost like taking a bow and arrow and pulling and releasing, you're much more likely to get the fundamental. Number two is kind of the opposite. It's crushing the string. This is less common than number one, but it does happen, and especially once you're trying to really work on getting that full sound, a lot of the time people go overboard and put a ton of arm weight in. And you can get that kind of pressed sound, and that's really doing the opposite of what you want. You want to get the string vibrating freely, and so having not enough weight is a problem, but also having too much weight. So generally, this is more of an intermediate, not first lesson kind of problem, but you want to just focus on relaxing and just letting the string spin and letting your arm ride the wave. Don't try to squash the string or impose your will on the string, just let it breathe. Number three is bowing too slowly. This can happen, and a lot of the time, if you're just not really getting a vibrant sound, it can be that you're moving the bow a little bit too slowly. This is generally not the number one problem, but it does happen, and you again, you just wanna see and look at the string and make sure that it's vibrating freely. And if it's not, and if you're getting this sort of dead sound like this, consider speeding up the bow a little and watch and listen to see if the sound improves. Number four is bowing too fast. This is related to number one. You can get the fundamental and still be bowing a little too fast. It's just like everything's a little bit aligned, like you're in the wrong gear. You want to get to that point where there's some heft to the sound, there's air in the sound, there's focus in the sound, but it breathes. It's one of those things that too slow, it'll interfere. Too fast, it'll interfere. It's all like kind of painting with sound. It's one of the many challenges of the bow. So if it's too fast, it's also a problem, just as is if it's too slow. Number five is the infamous crooked bow. This will just cut the fundamental out of your sound and it's a really challenging habit to get out of if you get used to playing this way. Having a mirror or using a phone in selfie mode or something like that and just watching to make sure this is always perpendicular, that's so important. And if you hear that loss of fundamental, this is one of the most common ones. And you can kind of hear that string fighting with itself to stay in the same spot or I can just let it go. And there's this extra layer of distortion and loss of fundamentals. So if you're hearing that, it's possible that the crooked bow is the issue. Number six drives people crazy, especially adults that have come to the base, and that's having a good sound, and then all of a sudden, having the sound totally disappear or radically change when you go to the next string. And that is most of the time an issue of weight transfer or not transfer. So you have this string going, I'm getting the D string going. I wanna make sure that I take this whole apparatus, my whole arm and shoulder and even my torso to an extent, and I move it over so that weight has now transferred to the new string. D string and then a string. I'm really feeling like I'm getting my whole body into that string. And if you're not hearing the same tone as you cross strings, it's likely that you just don't have the weight transfer dialed in. Using a mirror or a phone or tablet on selfie mode will help a lot and you can kind of watch and learn. Oftentimes when you're going to a lower string, it's an even bigger problem because of just the way that the body works. But it can happen as you're going from a lower to an upper string too. <laughs> Thank you.
Number seven can be particularly frustrating. It's the sound of the string grinding against the fingerboard. A lot of the time people think, oh no, there's something wrong with my bass or I have to change my strings or I have to go into the luthier and get an adjustment. That may be true, but a lot of the time this is just caused as a result of you not being careful with your bow angle. If you angle your bow too far this direction, so like toward the C bout here, the string is actually going to start vibrating into the fingerboard. And the same is true on the E string. So if you're hearing rattling on the two outer strings, check your angle and see if you can keep that angle as close as possible to the adjacent string. It's possible to play open G like this or like this. And especially when you're putting a lot of weight in, if you have the bow angled too far towards either C bout, you're maybe going to get some fingerboard slapping and that kind of thing. So just get in the habit of watching that angle and being careful with that angle. Number eight is one that drives adult learners especially crazy. Not as big a deal in my opinion when you're starting out, but still what happens when you play string and you, you kind of whack the adjacent string? Well, that is also a matter of bow angle and it's just not being as precise as you need to be with the bow angles. So when you're on the D string, it's possible to get really close to the A string. And if you're not careful, you kind of whiff it a little bit, same thing, you can go over to the G string. And one of the best ways to develop the ability to play cleanly on each string is actually to practice double stops. So I recommend starting on the G string, then play G and D together, play D alone, play D and A together, A alone, A and E together, and E alone. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different bow angles. And if you can practice that, you will learn where that spot where you do hit the two strings is, and you'll be able to more precisely play just one string. And again, if you hit two strings as you're starting out, I don't think that's the, the worst thing in the world. So don't let it bug you. You will develop this skill, but practicing these seven angles will help a lot. If you get this crusty sound, that sort of choky bees buzzing sound, that is often a result of over rosining. So learning the right level of rosin is tricky. It's much easier to put rosin on than take rosin off, but you want enough rosin on, enough sticky rosin on to really get the string working. So I generally recommend take out your bow when you're starting in the practice session and see, can you get the fundamental going easily? And maybe play for a minute or so just to warm up your rosin. If you're not, and I generally put on at least a stroke or two a day, but if you're not easily getting it going, put on two or three strokes, but don't put on 20 strokes because that's when you're gonna get that crusty rosin sound and it just adds a lot of distortion to the string. If you do get that, you can take a comb, a dry clean comb and kind of comb out the rosin or just really play into the string. Take a towel, wipe it off. That rosin will go down to a more acceptable level, but it might take you a few minutes or even 10, 15 minutes of playing to get that rosin off. So learn the difference between the whooshy, I have no rosin feeling, and the uh-oh, I over rosin, I can stick my bow to the wall feeling. You wanna find the Goldilocks spot in between those two so you're not going to either extreme. Finally, the golden rule of tone for double bass. And this was inspired by the wonderful Houston area bass teacher, Andy Moritz. I saw him do an awesome clinic in Texas in early 2022. And he talked a lot about this place called the, the six to one ratio spot where you can get this kind of, I call it like default good bass sound or the Francois Rabaf term that people use a lot is son premier. Uh, this sound that just kind of rings and it's easy and that you can get from day one on the bass. And the way Andy described it, and by the way, we're gonna have Andy on the podcast and the channel and he's got a new scale book coming out. So awesome teacher and he'll explain this much better than me. But what Andy recommended is find G harmonic, D, G, B, D, and now where that F natural is, put your bow there for the open string. And that is a ratio of six to one, maybe exactly six to one or basically six to one. And that's a spot that's really going to just ring freely and truly. It's almost like you can feel a little groove of sorts in the string when you get it. I have a very long fingerboard, so it looks like it's a different spot probably than your bass. But once you get that, you'll learn to just feel 
feel that spot. And I call this, again, default bass sound, kind of a boring term, zone premier, starting sound. This is a great way to start your day, no matter where you are on the bass, even if you've been playing for 20 years or 30 years like me, uh, I still like to start my day with this. And now if I get a little further away from the bridge, it's like taking the tone knob and turning it down. And that's cool. Sometimes I want that sound and it's an option. And the other side is true. If I get a little closer to the bridge, I get a little more bright in the sound, that's also a good sound. Sometimes you want to have that palette. But when you're starting out, that six to one spot, right again over that. So it's going to be about the edge of your fingerboard on a typical bass. That Son Premier six to one spot. Such a good way to develop sound, and then you can go anywhere from there. You can get bigger sound, softer sound, and if you just spend time there, you're much less likely to have all these weird things that we covered on the checklist. But still, when you hear weird things happening on the bass, I hope this checklist is helpful for just diagnosing what the heck is going on with your sound.